What's up guys? Fishing Dad here, Captain Hook, whatever you want to call me. So, I know I said my first video was going to be um, Catfish Basics. I unfortunately didn't have the time to get around to making that video. So, I'm going to do a quick, short little uh, tutorial here on pretty much the bare bones basics of just a basic bluegill setup bluegill is a very fun fish to catch um they're if you find one you're gonna find 20 of them uh they they are a schooling fish very rarely do they go out on their own unless um they're in a spawn and you'll find your big bull bluegills um kind of lurking looking for some food uh and protecting the nests um so they'll kind of venture out a little ways from the nests but anyway so what we've got here is this is actually my wife's rod uh what we've got is a simple zebco 33 reel um that's backwards for y'all i know but um, and then we've got just a little, real fine, this is probably, I would say, too heavy, really. But it, this is, whatever line they put on the reel, which is a very cheap line, I recommend changing that. Uh, I just haven't got around to changing this one yet. Uh, this is probably about 10 pound line on here, which is more than enough for bluegill. Ideally, you'd want two to four pound line. For a really good, if you wanted a good fight with a bluegill, you would put really, really, really light line on your reels. And it's on a Shakespeare Reverb uh, rod. This is just a little uh, medium action rod, uh, which again is kind of overkill for bluegill, really. Um, yeah, Shakespeare uh, Reverb. This is a good old Walmart find. Uh, I think that's like 20 bucks at Walmart. It come with a different reel on it. The rod is really good quality. I'll say that. The the reel that came on it fell apart. <laughs> I went to untangle the spool for my wife. And the thing just went into about a million pieces. So if you buy this rod. It's a rod and reel combo. Uh, I definitely recommend putting a different reel on the rod. The rod is great. You know sturdy but the reel is very very cheap um and don't get me wrong i love shakespeare shakespeare is a very reputable brand they make really good solid stuff however this is on the cheaper side of like i said it's a good walmart special that's what i call it um so yeah you've got your action rod right here where you know a lot of your rods have the foam or the cork that covers up this part in a perfect world if you didn't want to put your line or finger up here on the line to feel your bite you could hold right here and you would feel the the, the vibration whenever you get a bite however i've come to find with these rods the mediums and up this part is it has to be a big fish because bluegill taps so lightly that you wouldn't feel it. Um, so, fast forward here. Let's dive down deep and get to what we're looking at. So, I'm actually going to change this. I've just got a little uh, barrel snap, sit, sw blah, 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 snap swivel on here. Uh, it's a pretty big this is a pretty beefy one you don't need nothing this big you can get they make them smaller this is just all i had um so i'll put this right here and these by the way guys dr meter i got these for christmas a lot of pliers the the cutting edge right here for cutting like wire or whatever usually is really dull these watch this Every pair I've had barely gets through the line. I love these. These are awesome. That's also a Walmart special. I'm pretty sure you can get like the pliers, fish grips, gloves, and everything for like 20 bucks. Um, you'll hear me on this channel a lot talk about Walmart specials, and that's because 
I have a local Walmart that's about 10 minutes down the road, 15 on a heavy traffic day. Um, but yeah, I, I'm all about the Walmart specials, particularly on like gear. If I'm going to get, uh, and by gear, I mean tackle, you know, swivels, sinkers, uh, that kind of thing. Ooh, this, this is good and tangled up. Um, darn. Okay, hang on a minute. This is not going. There we go. So what I like to do is get a good amount of line off. And this is for any rig that I tie. Whoop. So I get about, like here is my end right here. And then I like to have about this much, about two, three foot of just string to play with. I, ultimately from the tip of the rod to me is probably about six foot of line. Um, you can't see the tip of the rod, but like I'm holding it and the tip of the rod is up here, right just above the camera. Um, so that's, I'm gonna show you. Um, so what I like to do is, what I'm gonna do with this one actually is put a bead on and I'll show you oh, what I mean. So, I cannot, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm not able to switch my camera around without stopping the video and doing all that. So we're just going to do it like this. So I'm going to just get a basic little bead, and you can get them at Hobby Lobby. I got mine, Walmart Special. I got, I think, I got a 500 piece set of beads for like $5 at Walmart. Just a simple, like, craft bead is really what it is, but they make them for fishing. But you could go to Hobby Lobby and get a pack of, like, a thousand for a couple dollars. Um, bead. And then the other thing we need is, I gotta find it. Um, we need a bobber. <laughs> Just a simple. This bobber is actually weighted, so I might, may or may not put a small split shot on this one. But you can see this—it's got a lead right here around the top of the cork. And what that does is, whenever it's in the water, it, it'll hold itself up rather than being all floaty. So I really like those. I really like that style of bobber, simply for the fact if you don't have a small split shot. You don't have to really worry about it. You can just, a lot of the time your cork will give you enough weight just to get it far enough out, far enough out to get to bluegill. Because with bluegill, they are very much a bank running fish. And what I mean by that, a bank running fish um, is gonna stay probably maybe at the most 10 foot off the bank particularly around grass, rocks, any kind of covers to where they can uh, lay their eggs, um, you know, and, and spawn. They spawn right on the bank. They actually school around the bank too. They'll find any kind of vegetation and try to get worms, crickets, grasshoppers, any kind of insects, because bluegill love insects. So what I've done, let me restart so I can show y'all what I'm doing here. So what I do, is I take my swivel and I put my bead on first okay and then what I do is I run obviously I go usually I go in and under the the swivel and I come around I'm not sure the name of this knot uh, so forgive me on that I call it a surgeon's loop uh, surgeon's loop is a little bit more intricate than this uh, but that's what I call it, just for simplicity. And then I form a loop, and then I'll wrap around that loop seven to ten times, depending on if I've got thicker line, like a braid. Like on my braided rod, rods, I've got, uh, I usually do about ten wraps to get that knot just bigger. So we go one, two, three, four, five, six and seven so then i grab a hold of it 
and you see this loop that we formed, you take your tag back through the back side of that loop, grab your tag end. Oops, I missed the I missed the loop. There we go. And then you pull it tight. Make sure you're pulling on your tag end and your main line. And then make sure your knot sits on the top of your swivel. And then what I like to do whenever I'm cinching it, I'll take my fingers and run that knot because this, this knot will slide. Um, it'll slide to where you can cinch it down and then I'll do a little bit of good old spit. If you're a germaphobe, you ain't got to use spit. You can get you some water on your finger and just rub it on that knot. What that does is, first of all, it water tights your knot. So water tighting your knot is very important because once it hits water, it will start to, it'll expand and then shrink just based on heat and everything else. So a little bit of spit or if you're at the pond and you don't like spitting and getting spit on you, to, to, you dip your finger in some water and just rub it around that knot and what you're left with is a nice if it'll focus and just a nice well guys i don't know if that's gonna there you can kind of see it nice little knot okay and i already clipped obviously clip your tag in as close as you can get it um and there you go so and then the reason I put a bead is so if I had a sinker above it, my sinker wouldn't be smacking my knot and weakening the knot. And also, whenever you do your knots, guys, always do the good old jerk test. Because if you keep really pulling on it, my knot actually come loose a little bit there. So that's why I do that. Pull on it, do some more jerking. Bluegill's not going to jerk any harder than that, really. And there you go, guys. So the, the bobber side of this really depends on the body of water you're fishing. Usually I like to run it about six inches uh, deep. So about right here, that's way more than six inches. So about right in there is where I'll put the float or cork. Oop. Take it like that right there and just I can't. And there you have a very basic uh, bluegill setup. Now, with this particular setup, since I don't have a slip sinker on here, I don't really need the bead. Um, I'm just putting it on there. Just I, honestly, I wasn't thinking. <laughs> but uh, there you go. About like I said, about six inches, depending on your depth. If you're fishing a really deep area, you know, pond, lake, you you would you need to adjust accordingly. You know, find out how deep your body of water is that you're fishing, and then you uh, you go from there and adjust accordingly. And you'll be able to tell because bluegill are a sort of in your water column in your water column slash top feeder they they don't they'll go to the bottom only because if they see they'll chase our worm falls into the water or um something you know something has caught their attention and they can dive down but other than that they usually stay pretty close to the top um so yeah oh i got close to the camera there guys sorry um Sorry, I'm trying to get my rod and my rod stand here. There we go. But that's just a basic setup for bluegill. I hope you guys enjoyed. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna pester y'all about the like and subscribe thing. If you like and subscribe, that's great. It helps. It helps grow the channel, guys. It helps me get the word out to other beginner beginning fishermen. But guys, I'm not gonna pester you for views. I'm not gonna pester you for subscription likes nothing because guys i do this for fun i don't do this to make any money and i never will i love to fish i've fished since i was a little boy and i just want to help the up and coming generation or maybe even uh young adults adults that are trying to get into fishing learn some just bare bones basics of fishing 
to where it's a very fun family activity, guys. It's fun to get out of the house. We're in springtime now here in North Carolina. Things are warming up. Um, so it's that time. It's that time of year to get out with your family and have some fun. So stay hooked and stay tuned.